Hello, and welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 203. John and Wendy talk to Deandra Wardell. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you, John? Wendy, I am well, and we are excited to once again be sponsored for this episode by the Bowling Green State University Graduate Programs in Organization Development and Change. I have learned how to say it in one breath. (laughs) Thanks to BGSU, though, for partnering with us again this month. Shameless plug for them. We're plugging them the whole month. (laughs) We just put out an episode, though, earlier this week with Lori Gobble, Mm -hmm. who is a a graduate of their program, who was just fantastic to talk to. She was awesome. And Lori and and Tom Daniels came back for his third appearance on the show. Wendy, one of us is going to end up at BGSU, I'm convinced. (laughs) Like, before it's all said and done, somehow we're going to, one of us is going to end up in graduate school there. It'll be the ultimate success story of the social hour and BGSU coming together. You know, and and I would in a heartbeat if it wasn't for having to like go to go to school. Well, go to school, it. but go to Ohio, and not that I have anything yes. against Ohio, but that would be a lot of travel for for school. If I could figure it out how to do that, um, I'd do it in a heartbeat. If you're listening to this episode yes. and you haven't listened to that one yet, go definitely go back and give it a listen. Check it out. It's a great conversation uh-huh. about not just BGSU, but applying graduate school yeah. if you're thinking about going back to school and what have you. One other shameless plug, (laughs) and that is for our chat. Yes. We have several lined up with guest hosts Mm -hmm. for the year already, which we're extremely excited about. However, we are continuing to look for those third chairs to come in. We just ask if you have an idea, bring it to us. Let's talk about it. If you're a sponsor that's potentially interested in sponsoring a chat, we do that quite a bit as well. Would love to have you take part. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure out what what, what do we have, and we're looking at the calendar like, you know, yeah, let's it's let's time. talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we we need some ideas. We like to get that planned out because it's nice to know what we're going to do and not kind of fumble a few days beforehand saying, "Oh, what should we talk about this weekend?" We want your ideas. We want to talk about what you want to talk about. So let us know and let's get it on the books. We are working on some really great uh-huh. ones already. We've had several conversations. We're working on one that if it happens, Wendy, I think it's fair to say it'll break the social hour chat record, yeah. I think, because it would be one that I think would be a, a very, would be a great surprise. And I'm going to leave it at that because if it doesn't happen, it's okay. <laughs> and if it does, you'll be like, John, how did you do it? How did you do it? We've got magic wands over here, apparently. So we're trying real hard. Working on it. I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am about tonight's guest. And a lot of you are going to go, who in the world is DeAndre? You're going to find out in the next bit of time. <laughs> I think you're going to be as excited as as I was initially to have met her. We met in a pretty interesting way in that we are both part of a podcast mastermind. Wendy, I I don't know how much brain power goes into these things, and I don't know why they asked me to be part, but they did. We have a mutual friend by the name of Mark Graben who started the Lean Communicators Group. It's a bunch of amazing people in the lean space and the HR guy. (laughs) We have a lot of entertaining conversations and we're all looking to boost each other's signals and and get better at what we do. And DeAndre and I had a long talk a little while back and I said, you've got to come on, talk about what you're doing, what you did, being in HR one time in her career. And and just, I know you're going to love this conversation. (laughs) I I can't wait. Let's make the introduction and get started. I'm super pumped to, uh, to welcome DeAndre to the show. She is a visionary leader, entrepreneur, coach, and speaker. She specializes in empowering individuals and corporate groups through strategic visioning to achieve goals and sustain transformative change. DeAndre launched On to the Next One Consulting LLC to serve as a strategic partner, cultural change agent, and operational expert for clients. She works alongside business partners to assess, prioritize, and address operational challenges. Her services range from facilitating strategy and alignment workshops to coaching leaders on diversity, equity, and inclusion principles, educating teams on the tenets of Lean and the Toyota Way, and creating affinity and employer resource groups, all designed to help partners meet short-term and long-term business goals. DeAndra's vision is to help organizations, groups, and individuals overcome obstacles and achieve their grandest visions and goals one step at a time. This is, includes her current passion project of the Root Cause Racism Movement, a global initiative to end systematic racism and advance social justice. Well, DeAndra, I am super pumped to have you on, especially as we just recently closed the door on HR Wonder Women, because you would be 
perfect for that show as well. So I'm so happy that you're here. Our first question, as always, what is in your glass? So what's in my glass is, and I have to show my glass because it's so pretty and it's really not a glass. It's a tumbler, but it is, hold on to your seat, orange flavored crystal light with a squeeze of lemon and lots and lots of water. Oh, it's so good. That was a big buildup. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It wasn't. That's the you biggest buildup that crystal really light has ever gotten. No, I think Crystal Light has been mentioned once on this a, show. But not that kind of a buildup. Four years ago. No, not, not with that, that kind of buildup. Build Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's not your regular cup of water. That's the point I'm that trying is, to that get That is absolutely right. right. It it's is not. special. Yes, Love yes. <laughs> well, DeAndre, again, really glad you're able to join us. And how did you first get into human resources training and then and then ultimately move into the continuous improvement space? So, you know, John and Wendy, one, thank you for having me on the podcast. I've, I've been looking so forward to this. HR is near and dear to my heart. And when I first got my start unofficially in HR is when I was in retail management. I managed two clothing stores and uh, two of the biggest malls in Louisville, Kentucky, and at that time, the store manager was all in one, not only doing all the operational work and customer service, but also in terms of staff. So if a position was posted, I was a part of the recruiting process. I did the interviews. Uh, once some a person started, I was part of, you know, work with onboarding and work, you know, getting them through orientation, training, coaching, reviews. As a result of working with HR and that capacity, I determined that I wanted a position in HR. From retail, I started working at an on-site staffing company where everything that an HR professional is responsible for, that was part of my responsibility. Throughout my life, I've always been a student and I've also been a trainer. And I've always looked for ways to coach develop and train people so that, you know, they can be successful at whatever it is they're doing. But yeah, I got my, my start actually in retail. And how do those experiences then lead to the continuous improvement world? From there, I had, from being in, from being in HR, I was in a number of other positions and operations. And um, I was, when I was at an electronic repair company, and that's when I had an operations role. The site manager was interested in introducing everyone in the facility to 5S, you know, help, helping them to understand how there was a place for everything and, and everything in its place. Typically, I was someone he called on to lead and guide and facilitate special projects. And I was really intrigued about 5S and, and it sparked you know, me to, to want to learn more about lean or continuous improvement itself. What I began to realize as a result of being introduced to 5S and, and working with the leadership team to introduce the entire site to 5S, that what continuous improvement is about was really not far removed from what I had been doing my entire life. And as a matter of fact, when, you know, I think about it as a child, my parents introduced me to continuous improvement with 5S. Put your toys up. You know, if you wherever you ha found something, make sure you return it to that space. And the whole shine and looking at ways to standardize. We had processes in our home for how we did everything when it was time to do homework, chores, or what have you. So that all blended and connected. And because of the emphasis and continuous improvement on demonstrating respect for people and helping to develop people, that really resonated with me, especially with my HR background. No matter where I find myself, and I've had, you know, I've had the opportunity to serve in a number of roles, but I remember one of my most favorite roles that I served in, I had the opportunity to be vice president of human resources and continuous improvement science. That's what the organization referred to lean or continuous improvement as, is continuous improvement science. I thought that was genius because 
at the heart of continuous improvement is involving people, is developing people, is engaging people. HR professionals, that's what we come to work for every day, to, to grow and develop people and, and see people achieve their ultimate level of success. I love it. We, we've talked, to, we've used the word lean and continuous improvement and, and that a little bit. So um, I've had a chance to do dabble in it um, a bit. And it always seems to be hard for people to make the leap when it comes to lean and process improvement from manufacturing to HR processes. So when, when you're talking with folks about lean um, process improvement, how do you explain it to folks so that they understand how it works and how it can be applied outside of manufacturing, especially to HR? So, you know, the thing about lean and continuous improvement, wherever there are people wherever there are processes, there is an opportunity for continuous improvement to take place. I believe that when we come to work, regardless of if we're in manufacturing or what our positions are, people come to work to be successful. They want to leave at the end of the day knowing that they've done a good job. It's something in their work that prohibits them from being successful. People will begin to modify and make adjustments and it's inherent in who we are that, you know, we want to do things better. We want to, to see things function the way they should. It's easy to, to get confused with the different methodologies. You hear about Lean Six Sigma and there's, you know, master black belts, there's black belts, there's green belts. And then you hear about the Toyota Way, you hear about the Toyota Kata, Agile, you hear about all of these different methodologies and practices. I like to keep it simple and refer to it as continuous improvement. And continuous improvement is one of the tenets of lean about looking for ways to always improve, make things better. And then the other part, a component of that is demonstrating respect for people. So ultimately what that is about is providing opportunities, looking at systems that allows people to be enabled, empowered, and engaged in the work that they do. That's what HR professionals do. You know, they look for ways to make the workplaces better, to make sure that the workplace is safe, um, you know, from an OSHA and regulation standpoint, but also where there is psychological safety and where people can be productive and whatever is established in their performance review goals, you know, being able to meet those. So it's a matter of always looking at ways to improve the work for the employee or for the team member, you know, regardless of what their position is within the organization or company. DeAndra, in 2021, you celebrated the one-year anniversary of root cause racism, and you and I have talked a bit about it. I'd like you to speak to why you started root cause racism, what it has become, and how you're partnering with HR and management teams, and what's been the biggest surprise along the way to you? Root cause racism actually started out as a hashtag that I use when I would post on Facebook. Considering, you know, that I was an HR professional, my personal Facebook page was very private. Oftentimes when I would see different things in the news and especially after the murder of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, I was compelled to do more and to, to speak more openly about it. That was during the onset of COVID. I was not able to be out in crowds physically protesting. So I de determined that social media, specifically LinkedIn, would be my virtual street of protest. But what that protest was about was I was so tired of seeing the arguing and the bickering on social media. And I wanted to spark conversation. I wanted people to start to engage about the things that we were witnessing every day that were unjust. And especially being from a continuous improvement background, as a lean person, what we practice with lean, that ultimately there is something that we're trying to accomplish or a problem that we're trying to solve. And applying scientific thinking to go about looking for ways to improve, it just made sense to me to connect continuous improvement with the work of social justice. And so I began posting as a result of, of some of the posts that I shared on LinkedIn, it provided an opportunity for me to have a conversation with Mark Graben. And, you know, Mark Graben, if you don't know who he is, 
look him up right now. He is just an incredible thought leader, especially in the, the healthcare and the continuous improvement space. Mark invited me to share a blog or post a blog on his blog about you know, some of the things that I was sharing around root cause racism and advancing social justice. And I said, well, you know, instead of writing one blog, I have an idea about a blog series. From that, I invited other colleagues, not only in the continuous improvement space, and not only lean practitioners, but people who are subject matter experts in business, education, healthcare, and government. And we use continuous improvement as a foundation for people to take the time and look at where problems exist within their circles of influence, follow the steps of continuous improvement, and determine what is one small step that they can take to make an impact on bettering our world. And that blog series and that first webinar really caught on. It turned into more blog series and more webinars. Um, As a result of doing that work and collaborating with some of the, the great people I was working with, it motivated me to submit my resignation and go off on my own and do this work full time. And so now what that has morphed into is I'm working with organizations on looking at how to operationalize the work of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Not looking at it as an add-on, but as a way, looking at policies, looking at processes and procedures with the ultimate goal of boosting engagement and making sure that everyone, every person, feels like they belong and they're welcome in the workplace and that their input is valued. That's the space I'm working in now. I get excited when I start talking about this. I feel like I'm rambling on. I hope I answered that question. But um, but yeah, I'm just amazed at how it has, has grown and how it has, what it has morphed into. And you asked me, you know, what is one of the things that I noticed or may have been a big surprise? And that is that people are afraid to make a mistake. They're afraid to say the wrong thing. People feel like, well, I don't know everything there is to know about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I don't know everything there is to know about lean. And I'm so afraid I'm going to do the wrong thing. And that's why this work is so important, because we identify what's one small step we can take. And no matter what that step is or what experiment we run, there's no such thing as a mistake. We're going to learn from it. And what we learn, we can build on that and continue to move closer and closer ultimately to the goal that we're trying to reach. And that's to have a more inclusive workspace. Piggybacking on that, what is one piece of advice you would give to HR practitioners when it comes to helping to foster that more inclusive work environment? Actually, I'm going to use a lean term, (laughs) but I will explain it. (laughs) Imagine that, Wendy. Imagine that. The one piece of advice that I would give is for HR professionals to go to Gimba. Gimba is the place, the real place where the work happens. Okay. No matter, you know, wherever you are, where does the work happen? Where is it that people are working and and making a difference in whatever the product or service is that you deliver to the customer? And when you go to Gimba, go with open eyes to learn and to see where employees may need help, where they have questions, what is it that they're excited about, what is it that they want to do more of, and really engage with whatever is happening in that environment at Gimba. From there, take whatever you learn or whatever it is you experience at Gimba and look at ways to incorporate that with the work that you're doing with the HR policies and the procedures to create an environment that's psychologically safe for employees to share their ideas, to share their frustrations, to share whatever their concerns are um, so that, you know, you can partner and collaborate with those employees to work to make that environment more inclusive. So it's all about going to Gimba, but going to Gimba with open eyes to see and open ears to listen and not jump to conclusions or make assumptions but to really get a good understanding of what's going on in the working environment. DeAndre, I always appreciate when I can put glossary in the, in the show notes when we talk about Gimba. So we will make sure that we clarify that for those that may not be familiar. 
one of the things that we did in 2021 was started to crowdsource questions. It makes our lives a little easier to have previous guests ask questions along the way. In this case, Kyle Cup asks, what does freedom mean to you in the context of the workplace? Freedom. Freedom was the my mantra and my theme for my uh, vision board last year. Freedom really resonates with me. Freedom in the workplace goes back to what we've been talking about, that psychological safety where employees and team members are able to share ideas or voice concerns or speak up without fear or concern about any type of retaliation. Freedom also is involving, being involved in what's going on with the co company, understanding what the strategic goals are, being able to be part of the innovation process to bring ideas forward of what can make the organization even better. And the other part of freedom is, you know, I guess summarizing what I've already said, when you can bring your entire self to work and not be concerned about whatever it is about you that may stand out or make you feel like you're different, that you can bring your whole self to work, that you know that you belong, that you are, you have that community in the workplace and everyone is invested in your success. And as an employee, I see my connection and being a part of the success of my team members and colleagues. So that's what I see as, you know, freedom in the workplace. With that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. This episode of the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast is brought to you by Bowling Green State University. If the last two years have taught us anything, it's the importance of being agile and open to change. Bowling Green State University is a world leader in providing graduate education to working professionals in organization development and change. In fact, in 2019, BGSU launched one of the only professional doctorate programs in the country focused on organization development and change. Both the master's and doctorate degree programs are designed for working professionals and blend the convenience of virtual learning with regularly scheduled in-person weekends a few times a year. The BGSU graduate programs in organization development and change provide students with practical skills and help them grow from a subject matter expert to a sought after thought leader. To learn more about the master's and doctorate programs in organization development and change at Bowling Green State University, visit bgsu.edu slash mod. Thanks again to Bowling Green State University for sponsoring the HR Social Hour Half Hour podcast. And now back to the show. And we are back, Deandra. It is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the Half Hour Question Connection. What career did you dream of having when you were a child? As a child, <laughs> this is so funny. I absolutely adored my Barbie doll heads. <laughs> so I like to play cosmetologist and beautician. Okay. And I would always style their hair. I would try to dye their hair, do other things that <laughs> didn't come along with that, you know, Santa didn't bring those things to me when he bought those Barbie right. doll heads. <laughs> and so I wanted to be a cosmetologist because I just enjoyed bringing the beauty out, not only from my dolls, but like family members would let me put makeup on them and do their hair. You know, they were very kind now that I think about it. When they looked in the mirror, they, they were excited like I'd really done something. But uh, that's what I wanted to be as a child. I wanted to be a cosmetologist. And when you said you worked on Barbie heads, DeAndre, were you working on the dolls or those actual heads, like almost human sized heads that they used to put out? Yeah, the human sized heads okay, they used okay. to put out that had the tray around them. Yeah, okay. So I, yes, my sister I had, had some all of my those, product. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> That was some good fun. <laughs> Love it. I, I have fun memories of those uh, those as well. <laughs> DeAndre, who's one person you've gained your network in the last year that you think more people should know? I just met someone actually in December. I am currently um, a part of a cohort with E. Cornell and the Diversity and Inclusion Certification. And I met Stacy Lewis. She is the chief HR officer at the Port of Long Beach, and she is also the CEO of HR Interrupted. And she is just, I mean, she's out there making things happen. And a lot of what she does, especially with her firm, HR Interrupted, is she looks at outdated ideologies and policies and in practices that have an impact on people, the organization, and the culture. 
I am so thankful that the universe allowed our paths to cross because she is absolutely phenomenal. Deandra, if you could go back to the start of your career, what is one piece of advice you would give yourself based on what you know now? I'll pick just one thing. (laughs) Yes. That I would tell Deandra in her 20s. I would say, you know what, Deandra, enjoy the journey. Every experience that you will encounter, every situation, different things, when they don't go as you had planned or expected, all of it fits in to your journey. And it will make sense a few years down the road. So in the meanwhile, relax, learn, and don't get yourself so stressed out. (laughs) That's what I would tell myself. (laughs) That ultimately is going to work out. Yeah, ultimately it's going to work out and you're going to be where you're supposed to be doing what it is that you're supposed to do. DeAndre, how do you enjoy giving back to the continuous improvement community, your community at large, HR, anybody and everybody that you help out? Well, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I like to spotlight the work of others, especially in the lean community, because there are so many great people that are doing great things like there's a kata for good and lean Six Sigma for good, where we're taking what it is that we're practicing and, and use that to impact other communities and nonprofits. So like, for example, Brian Hurley, who is in our Lean Communicators group, you know, he does Lean Six Sigma for good and is making such a a huge impact. So I always try to point to those other people that are using their gifts and talents to help others. Also, I am involved with a number of volunteer organizations where I have the opportunity to do community service, to mentor youth and um, to raise money for scholarships. And then with hashtag root cause racism, um, there is an arm within or are part of that organization where monies are raised for scholarships. I've been so fortunate in my life and in my career where other people have thought of me and they've pulled me along or they've recommended my name. And so I try to pay it forward and do the same in the continuous improvement space. Now, for human resources, what I always try to do, and especially since COVID and some of the other things, the various pandemics we've experienced since 2020, uh, my heart goes out to HR professionals. Anything that I can do to support and encourage HR colleagues, I definitely try to do that because I realize that they have a lot on their shoulders right now. What is your favorite movie? My favorite, can I pick more than one? Yes, you can. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) not to be difficult. I have two favorite movies, and they both have purple in the title. So one is The Color Purple. Absolutely love that movie. I pretty much know all the lines. And Purple Rain, (laughs) because I adore all things Prince. What is your favorite or most memorable experience at a live event? I will never forget when I was in college attending a Prince concert. And I'm so thankful that I got to see him perform live and in person. And I know I probably should have talked about maybe a Kodakon that I got to (laughs) co-host, which that was a wonderful experience. And, you know, some other fabulous Lean Six Sigma summits I've attended. But hands down, it's that Prince concert. Because here's the thing about it, Wendy and John. Although there were, you know, tens of thousands of other people there, he was singing to me the entire time. (laughs) And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Deandra, if you could be on any TV show, either as a character or as yourself, what would it be? I would like to be myself. I'd want to be myself. And and here's the thing about it. I have aspirations to have my own TV oh. show. Because what I want to do, I, I see that as another opportunity and a platform. One of my biggest goals is I want everyone in the world to know about continuous improvement. I want to create a world of problem solvers. So I think that, you know, having a medium of TV and I I haven't quite figured it out yet, the name of the show and how it all would work. I've been trying to, you know, study the different things that Oprah has done and, and, and see what I can learn from her. But yeah, I would like to have a TV show that talks about how continuous improvement isn't just for manufacturing. Again, like I said earlier, wherever there are people in processes, continuous improvement fits. 
Well, let us know because we'll help get the word out. Okay, cool. <laughs> and I would have to have you all on as guests. John's going to get his makeup done again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True story. <laughs> We made a TV appearance a couple years ago, and yes, they made me up. It was quite comical. It was quite comical. I like to say, though, John, you and I got our makeup professionally done for the very first time at the same time. At the same time. At the same time. Yes. 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 I had never had Fair my enough. makeup done either. So, <laughs> What a great experience to share. <laughs> it was fun. It has been announced that it is DeAndra Wardell Day all around the world. What are we doing to celebrate? First of all... Everyone has to wear pink and green that day because those are my two favorite colors. And and following in what it is that we practice and what we're sharing and communicating with the work of hashtag root cause racism, everyone will be asked to find one small thing they can do within their circle of influence to advance social justice. So whether it would be to make a donation or read a book or you know, call some friends and have a conversation or whatever it is, you know, read a blog, listen to a podcast to advance their learning and their experience. I just would want them to do one small thing that that would make that impact while they're wearing pink and green. Finally, Deandra, as you know, we are crowdsourcing to get questions for our guests. If you could ask the next guest of the podcast any question, what would it be? There is a question that we ask in the continuous improvement space, especially uh, those of us who are familiar with the Toyota Kata. The first step of the Toyota Kata is about understanding the direction or getting the challenge. What is the big goal that we're trying to achieve? And so we always ask, we frame the question, wouldn't it be great if? And so with that mindset, wouldn't it be great if? I would be curious to learn from the next guest, as it relates to supporting HR, supporting HR professionals, who is HR for HR? You know, what can we do to support HR? What is there, wouldn't it be great, as a way to ensure that HR professionals have what they need to be successful, to be able to remain energized, to continue the work that they are doing because HR professionals, like I said, I'll say we, because I still consider myself a part of that group. We really are, are making a, a powerful impact and have the opportunity to really drive change and, and boost culture in the spaces where we work. You, you won't be able to read it, but it is now in the book. <laughs> it will be asked very soon of an okay. upcoming guest. I can't thank you enough for taking part. Big shout out to Mark Graben for connecting us to begin with. I think Mark's got like a hundred podcasts now. So um, <laughs> you, know, you, you can find him everywhere. I just appreciate so much your energy, your positivity, what you're trying to do in so many places and spaces to help so many people. Most of our listeners didn't know you before. They do now, and they're going to want to get to know you better and get connected. What is the best way for them to reach you out there? The best place to reach me is to visit my website because that will automatically connect them to all of my social media channels, as well as my email address and all that other good information. And my website is my name, DeandraWardell.com. So that's D-E-O-N-D-R-A-W-A-R-D-E-L-L-E. We will have that in the show notes. And then, Wendy, how about you? Best way for listeners to find you out there? Best way is on my blog, mydailyjourney.com. And, of course, second and fourth Sunday of each month, you will find me on Twitter as part of our twice-monthly Twitter chat. How about you, John? Once again, thanks to our friends over at the Bowling Green State University Graduate Programs and Organization Development and Change for sponsoring this episode Mm -hmm. and the entire month of January. Be sure to check them out at bgsu.mod. And as for me, johntherman.com for all things John Thurman and for the show, hrsocialhourpodcast.podbean.com. Listen, review, share, follow wherever you are, whatever platform you're listening on. If it's a plus, if it's a check, if it says follow, (laughs) if it says I don't know. Every platform is different. Just follow us. There's a way for you to be sure to follow us because you'll get those new episodes each and every week. Every time a new show hits, it'll be right there ready for you to hear. You never know. You're going to get to meet great people like Deandra when you do that. Exactly. International listeners, we'd love to talk about lean and training and whatever you're doing in your spaces anywhere around the globe. The goal in 22 is to have more international guests. So please reach out to us. Let's have those conversations and get those times scheduled. Deandra, again, thank you so much for 
being part of this conversation. And so for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect, give back, and network. network. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.